Hi everybody, welcome back. In this video we're going to be talking about object tracking. This is a really interesting topic and a lot of fun uh, to experiment with and we hope you enjoy uh, this demonstration. So first of all, what is tracking? Uh, tracking usually refers to uh, estimating the location of an object and predicting its location at some future point in time. And in the context of computer vision, uh, that usually amounts to uh, detecting an object of interest in a video frame and then predicting uh, the location of that object in subsequent uh, video frames. And we accomplish this by uh, developing both a motion model and an appearance model. Uh, the motion model, for example, will estimate the position and velocity of a particular object and then uh, use that information to predict its location in future uh, video frames. And then we can also use an appearance model, which encodes what the object looks like, and then search the region around the predicted location from the motion model to then fine tune the location of the object. So the motion model is an approximation uh, to where the object might be located in a future video frame, and then the appearance model is used to fine tune that estimate. Uh, all of the uh, code that we'll be using below is from the uh, OpenCV API tracker class. So we'll talk about uh, that a little bit more as we scroll down through the notebook here. So as a concrete example, suppose we're interested in tracking a specific object like the race car identified here in the first frame of a video clip. In order to initiate the tracking algorithm, we need to specify the initial location of the object. And to do this, we define a bounding box shown here in blue, which consists of two sets of pixel coordinates, which define the upper left and lower right corners of the bounding box. And then once the tracking algorithm is initialized uh, with this information, the goal is to then track the object in subsequent video frames by producing a bounding box in each new video frame. So uh, we'll talk more about this below, but before we get started uh, with the code description, let's just take a look at the uh, tracking algorithms available in OpenCV. Uh, there's uh, eight different algorithms uh, listed here, and uh, we're not going to review the, uh, the details of each of these, uh, but it's worth noting that uh, depending on your application, one might be more suitable than the other. Uh, for example, uh, some are more accurate, some are faster, uh, some are more robust to uh, occlusions of the object being tracked. So that's uh, worth keeping in mind when you experiment with all of these uh, different algorithms. And then one other thing that's worth mentioning is that the uh, go turn model uh, here is the only one that's uh, deep learning based. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that further below. So uh, just as a preview to get started here, I've got the... Um, uh, the test video clip uh, right here, and let's just play it uh, one or two times. So you'll notice that uh, early on the car's uh, appearance is relatively constant as well as its uh, uniform motion. But as it starts to make a turn here, you'll see that uh, we see the broadside portion of the car, and then the lighting is starting to change quite a bit, and then uh, now it's uh, getting smaller and smaller off into the distance. So those uh, types of things are going to represent some challenges uh, for some of the uh, tracking algorithms. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit more about that. So let's start taking a look at the uh, first code block in this notebook. Uh, here we're just importing some modules that are required. And then on line 10, we're indicating the file name for the uh, video clip that we're going to process. And then here we're defining uh, some convenience functions that will allow us to render bounding box information on the output video stream as well as uh, annotate the uh, output video frames with some text. And then recall uh, earlier we described that one of the uh, algorithms is the uh, GoTurn model, which requires an inference model. So uh, this block of code here is um, uh, required to download that inference model. And then uh, this figure here uh, is a very high level description of uh, how the GoTurn tracker is um, trained and used. So in the center here, we're indicating that we have a um, pre-trained uh, neural network model, also known as an inference model. And it takes as input uh, two cropped images, one from the previous frame and one from the current frame. Uh, it uses the uh, bounding box from the previous frame to crop both of these images. And therefore, the object of interest uh, is located in the center of this uh, previous frame. And obviously, if the uh, object has moved um, in the current frame, then it won't be centered uh, in this cropped image because we're using the bounding box from the previous frame to crop both of these images. And then uh, it's the job of the inference model to then predict uh, what the uh, bounding box is uh, in the output frame here. So that's just a high level description of um, how that works. So let's scroll down a bit further here and take a look at this next code block. Uh, this is where we're going to create a tracker instance. 
And we start by defining a list of tracker types here where we're just indicating the list of string names that are available in the OpenCV API. And then depending on the uh, tracker algorithm that you wanted to execute, you would just set the appropriate index here into that list. And since that's specified as two, then we'd be indicating that we'd like to execute the KCF tracker in that list. And this uh, if else block here would then uh, call the appropriate class to create the tracker object. So in the case of uh, the default, we'd be calling the uh, tracker KCF underscore create class to uh, create a tracker object of that class. So let's scroll down here to the uh, next section. Uh, in this block of code, uh, we're setting up the input output uh, video streams. So here on line two, we're passing in the uh, video input file name and creating a, a video input object. And then on the next line, we'll go ahead and read the first frame from that video file. And then uh, down here on lines uh, 13 and 14, uh, we're doing a similar thing for the uh, output video stream and uh, creating a uh, video out object, which will then write results to uh, from our tracking algorithms. Now in this section here, uh, as we talked about earlier, we need to define a bounding box around the object that we're interested in tracking. And uh, we're accomplishing that here just manually. Uh, notice that I'm specifying the uh, two sets of pixel coordinates here for the upper left and lower right corners of that bounding box. Uh, but in practice, you would um, either select that with a user interface or, um, or perhaps uh, use the detection algorithm to detect objects of interest for tracking and uh, do that programmatically. Uh, so, but for demonstration purposes here, we're just going to uh, set that box manually. And then down here, we're now ready to initialize the tracker. So in order to do that, we use the uh, tracker object here and call the init function. And we pass it the first frame of the video clip and then the bounding box uh, that we defined manually up above. Okay, and then once that's defined, we're ready to enter a loop here to process all the frames in the video. So uh, this first line of code uh, in the loop on line two is reading the next frame uh, from the video clip. And then on line 10 here, we're going to pass that frame to the tracker update function and hopefully return a bounding box for the object um, that was detected. So if we detect the object and we retrieve a bounding box from the update function, uh, then we'll go ahead and, and render a bounding box rectangle on the current frame. And if we didn't detect the, the bounding box, then this OK uh, flag would be uh, false, and we'd simply um, annotate the frame with a uh, tracking failure uh, message uh, indicated here. And then uh, further below, we'll also annotate uh, the video frame with the type of tracker that's being used and the frames per second that's been calculated, and then write that frame out to the uh, output video stream. So that's all this loop does. It um, cycles through each frame in the video clip and calls the tracker update function and then annotates the frames and sends them to the output video stream. So uh, let's scroll down here a bit further and take a look at some results. So this notebook has already been executed uh, a few times for different trackers. And so we're now we're just going to replay those results. So all of these results uh, shown here are the output video streams that have been annotated with tracker results. And you can see in this first example, uh, this is the KFC tracker. And I'm going to go ahead and play this, and we'll take a look at how it performs. So it looks like it's doing a fairly good job of uh, tracking the car. A little bit off-center, but uh, still maintaining track on what's um, obviously the car in the video frame. And then as the car rounds the corner, it's, uh, it's doing okay. And then uh, shortly here, we're going to see that uh, it has a little bit of difficulty. Right here at the end, it drops track on the car. Uh, so let's take a look at the next uh, example. The next example here is the uh, CSRT tracker, and we'll go ahead and, and take a look at that. So this one does a little better job tracking the car uh, with the bounding box encompassing uh, most of the car and centered on the car, pretty much. And then as the car uh, makes the turn here, uh, the box is on the front of the car, but it's still got the car in track, I'd say. And then right there at the end, it, it looks like it's having difficulty um, maintaining a precise location for the car. So then let's go down to the, uh, the final example, and this is the GoTurn uh, tracker. Again, trained on a, a deep neural network uh, offline. So let's take a look at this. 
So it looks like it's maintaining track as well. The bounding box is a little narrower, but centroided on the uh, on the car. And then as it rounds the corner here, it still maintains uh, track. The car is pretty much in the center of that uh, bounding box uh, for the most part. It gets a little wider there, but then as it tails off, it uh, it maintains uh, track on the car right there at the end. Uh, so out of the three examples, uh, the Go Turn Tracker probably uh, did the best job of maintaining track uh, throughout uh, the entire video uh, stream, and especially right there at the end, uh, still able to uh, keep the car uh, essentially in the centroid of that bounding box. So we hope that gives you a good feel for how to exercise the various tracking algorithms in OpenCV and especially the small amount of code uh, that's required in order to get something up and running. So we encourage you to uh, experiment further, uh, try some of your own videos, and uh, experiment with the various algorithms. And uh, we hope this was helpful to you, and we'll see you next time. Thanks so much.